I'm sure many of you, uh, like I some time ago, uh, watched a movie entitled The Bucket List, starring Jack Nicholson and Morgan Freeman. And in it, Jack Nicholson plays an uncaring multimillionaire named Edward who has everything that money can buy. And uh, Morgan Freeman plays a fellow by the name of Carter, who is a humble but very knowledgeable mechanic. And these perfect strangers meet as patients in a hospital room. And actually, the hospital is owned by Edward, the rich multimillionaire, where they both discover that they, they have cancer, and they both are given or, or told that they have a year in which to live. And, and in the opening scenes of this movie, as they get to know one another, Edward, uh, <clears throat> while uh, Carter is in the, in the restroom, uh, Edward finds a, a piece of paper that uh, Carter has made a list on of the things that he wants to do before he dies. He uh, makes up what he calls his bucket list, and it includes lots of interesting things. And uh, the bucket list is a, a list that you have things that you want to do before you kick the bucket. And these two men uh, in this hospital room, one a multimillionaire, another one, a, as I said, a knowledgeable mechanic, they, they, uh, they, are, they realize that they aren't going to beat their cancer, and uh, so they decide that they're going to follow their dreams. And what Carter does is heads off with Edward in his private plane as they begin to live out what they think are their dreams and their life goals, much to the chagrin of Carter's wife, and his family, and throughout their journey, they begin to discover what's really important in life. In fact, in this series, you're going to see a couple of, of tidbits uh, of this uh, movie that, that are just actually amazing, I think, for Hollywood, where, where two guys really look at life and uh, begin to explore life in, uh, in all of its uh, uh, beauty. Now, I want to give you a hint. Uh, it's not about going halfway around the world to see the wonders of the world or to live in luxury. They decide, they figure out that that isn't what life is all about. That they dis And they discover it has much more to do with faith, with relationships, with family, and with friends. Now, I felt that this movie, uh, that when, as I said, we'll take a look at it in the next few weeks, that this movie was a perfect launching point for a new year because any new year, we know, tends to be a time that we look back at the things that we have been doing and uh, reflect on the past year or maybe years and uh, the things that we did or that we did not do. We have a tendency at times like today to, to look back at happy moments. Of course, there are times we have to look back at regrets too and the disappointment. Well, we do that. We look back. And then the second thing that we always do at the start of any new year is, is we look at that new year as a fresh start, a, a chance to change things up, if you will, for the better. And anybody, did anybody here make any New Year's resolutions, by the way? No? Got a, uh, there are a few bobbleheads out there. Well, uh, I happened to find uh, the top ten resolutions that Americans have for the new year. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, let, let me tell you, I, I, I skipped one thing. I, uh, the, uh, uh, the little note pads in your, uh, uh, in your bulletin are for you to take that pencil in front of you and, and perhaps today to, uh, I want you to, during the sermon, if you think about something that, uh, that, you, that is uh, important for uh, you to do, what I, I want you to do is to list your priorities and, and do two copies. Uh, one for you to keep, and it's on a post-it note, so you can take it and post it on your uh, bathroom mirror or on your refrigerator. And the other one, I want it to be the exact uh, duplicate. Don't necessarily put your name on it, but uh, I want you to give that to me at the end of this service because I want to use them in the series as we go along. You will be partially writing this series as uh, as we go along with these uh, these note uh, pads. Now, let me also tell you that, that uh, uh, one thing that I'm sure that will happen is in this next week, you're going to go home and you're going to think, oh, I should have added such and such to my notepad. Well, you can do that, and, but what I want you to make sure and do is next week, we're still going to have a couple of these in each bulletin, and I want to know what those priorities are 
that you identify in the coming week as you have a little bit of time to think about it. So that's what these uh, little notes, uh, post-it notes are in, uh, in, your, bu- in your bulletin. And uh, as I said, I want you to use them and, and make a copy of them and give them to me when, uh, when we are finished. But as I said, I found a list this last uh, couple weeks of America's top 10 resolutions. And these, these are the top 10 over the last 25 years. Uh, the top, uh, the 10th one was uh, people say at New Year's time that they want to be more spiritual. Number nine, people say they want to get out of debt. Number eight, they want to be more organized. Number seven, they want to spend less time on the Internet. Anybody want to spend less time on the Internet? Number six, they want to spend more time with family. And we are told that, that number five is to be a better person. Four uh, in America's list of resolutions is to quit drinking. Three is to quit smoking. Maybe those two things ought to go together. Number two is to exercise, and of course you know number one is to lose weight. So that's, that's usually on a lot of people's uh, uh, resolutions during the year. Now, as I said, I won't ask, uh, uh, I'm not going to ask if number one or number two or number three or number four on any, any of your lists, but if they are, Uh, more power to you. We'll be praying for you. But resolutions are one thing. Those are a list of resolutions. I resolve to do such and such. But to me, priorities are different. Priorities are really a bigger idea. Priorities is something that you do for more than than just I want to change something or, or I want to do something better or I want to do something differently over the next year. Setting godly priorities is looking back, uh, is really going forward to the end of your life and imagine yourself looking back at your life and realize what you have left undone or what you should do before you die. What things have you left undone? Now, I can imagine that if I gave this list to to, to folks at the uh, Greenwood Mall that I would probably get a list a lot like Edwards and Carter's. Uh, Edwards and Carter's included, one of them was to kiss the prettiest girl in the world. Uh, Carter's, uh, he wanted to make a million dollars. One of them wanted to do skydiving. And uh, one of them was to drive a favorite sports car model that they'd always wanted to drive. Now, that may sound like some pretty fun things to do, but what I am going to do in the next seven or eight weeks is to challenge you to begin creating a list of godly priorities for yourself based not just on what you want to do or what you think would be fun and exciting. Uh, and that was the problem with Edward and Car- that they, Edward and Carter ran into. But I'm going to challenge you in the next seven or eight weeks to prayerfully create a list of things that are really going to matter at the end of your life. And as I said, to help you with that, I, I, I want you to start that process here. I'm going to give you an opportunity to, to make that process work in the future. But why a priorities list? Some might even, and you can if you need to, call this a bucket list like the movie that I spoke of earlier. Now, there are some of you that might think this is rather depressing. Pastor Jeff, I don't want to think about going to the end of my life and turning around and looking backward. That's depressing to me. Why would we want to talk about death or kicking the bucket? Shouldn't we be focusing on things that are more positive? And it's interesting to me that even Christians don't like thinking about how short life is. Yet in our passage this morning, the scripture passage that we're going to use as sort of a theme for uh, this uh, entire series. It it comes from a psalm that David wrote, and it is found in Psalm 39, and a very interesting verse, and that is verse 4. So let's take a look at our scripture and see what David says, uh, what it sounds like is on David's bucket list. He says these words, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered and that my life is fleeing away. Uh, my My life is no longer than the width of my hand. An entire lifetime is just a moment to you. Human existence is just a breath. Now why in the world would David ask God to remind him of how very, of the very thing 
which most of us are trying to ignore or which most of us are trying to forget that our time on earth is evaporating, that our days are numbered, that our days are getting shorter. I've heard people say to me that the older you get, the faster time seems to go. And I found that to be true. It's like saying, please, God, David, David is saying here, it's like us perhaps saying, please, God, remind me of how old I am and how little time I have left for me. Now, that's not, sort of a, that's not something that any of us are real excited about, are we? Uh, for some of you, it might be a good exercise. Look at the person to your left or to your right and just look at them and saying, I am so old. Now, say back to the other one, you most certainly are. <laughs> David wrote this because he recognized that we, are, that we should be reminded of the shortness of our lifespan. And it's, a, it's really a healthy thing for us to realize the little time that any of us have left on earth, especially in the grand scheme of eternity. It changes our viewpoint about what we're doing here on earth. It changes our thoughts about the time that, that any of us have left. And the important things, we know this. Unfortunately, the important things we find ourselves keep putting off. We keep saying that we're going to get around to it eventually. We, we keep expecting that the changes that we know need to be made, that somehow they'll just magically occur. The things that we thought we would do, we realize that there isn't much time left to do them. And hopefully, we are also jarred back into realizing what is really important in life. There was a first century philosopher. His name was Epictetus. And he lived from 55 to 135 A.D. And he said it this way. This is our predicament. Over and over again, we lose sight of what is important and what isn't. And dear friends, I believe that that's true. And part of the problem is that we tend to lose sight of what is important and put off, uh, other th uh, put off doing them for other things is because we don't think that, that the things that are important are necessarily urgent. You realize that, you know, most of the things that grab our attention really are, are not that important. They're, they're not urgent. You know, last Sunday when, when it was snowing and, and, and we were told, we were, you know, and I could see the big flakes falling and, and, and the snow started to mound up. And, and, and even though it, 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 I saw it start to climb on the stairs on, on, the, on, the, on our back porch, I realized that, that sooner than later, it would all be gone. The thing that was urgently hollering at me, shovel me, shovel me, get out here and shovel me, because you've got some place to go. There's, there's a gallon of milk and a dozen eggs with you calling your name. And, and, and it was the, the urgent thing that was hollering at me, but the important things... They just, sort of, they just sort of receded into the background. Dear friends, there's an old saying, the squeaky wheel gets what? Gets the grease. And the, and the squeaky wheel in all of our lives are those urgent and pressing matters that, that really aren't that urgent and aren't that pressing. And we, we allow those factors to control us. Now let me tell you about David, why David did what he did, why he, he said this to God. For David, the issue was sin. David wanted God to remind him that his days were numbered because hopefully it would help him to refrain from using his tongue or his words in sinful ways. David wanted to live a life for God. And we'll, we'll talk about that faith aspect next week. But what I want to point out this week is that first, the first verses, the verse where David realizes how easy it is to lose focus on doing the right thing. How easily things get crowded out that are really important. And dear friends, one of the things that I've found helpful in my life is to make a priorities list. Now, it may sound silly to you, but it's a tangible way for us to look critically at our life and to figure out what it is that we are going to do with the time that we have left. There is something that happens when we put our ideas on paper. Now, supposing, think about this. Suppose 
that any of you found out tomorrow that you only have a year left to live? Would that cause you to change what you're doing? It, it, it is being an intentional about what really matters is when we hear those kinds of words. You know, would you deal with relationships differently? What would, what would people who were, at, what would you want people at your funeral to say about you? What am I doing right now to accomplish the goals that I know that God would have me set as priorities in my life? Now, if I were a counselor, one of the things that I would drag out right now is the miracle question. And the miracle question goes something like this. If I were to wake up tomorrow and a miracle happened overnight and you are now living your dream life, what does that look like? What would your day be like? What would your marriage be like? How would your relationships be different? How are you relating to them and how are they relating to you? And the follow-up question goes something like this. Would we be more affectionate? Would we be spend more time together? What is really important is that we begin to see the kind of person we would like to become and then ask a penetrating question. What is stopping me from being the person that, that I really want to be or what is stopping me from doing the things that I really think that I ought to be doing right now? And what this really is about, I think, is prioritizing, getting our priorities straight and living them out. Let me give you an illustration, and we've all seen, I think, pictures of this or heard the story of this. Let's, uh, let's say that, that I gave you a pile of rocks and a pile of sand and a pile of rice, and let's say the rocks illustrate our, our biggest priorities. The uh, sand is our next list, or the rice is our next list of priorities. The sand is, is the, the, the lower priorities. And, uh, and all of us know that if we're given a jar and, and that represents our life, that, the, that the, the things that we need to put in the jar first are the rocks, right? The big things that are important. Then we would want to put the rice in to fill in some of the holes. Then we want to pour some of the sand in to fill all of the cracks. And then when I would ask you, is there any room for any more? And you might say no, and I'd say, well, wait a minute, let me get a glass of water. And water would fill up all, all around there. But one thing's for sure is you can't get all that stuff in there unless you get all the big stuff in correctly. You can't expect your life to be what, what you know it should be and what God would have it to be unless you put the big things in to, uh, into the jar of your life first. And, and really the way we ask ourselves the questions on what is important is what do I, and, and here's the question you need to ask. And by the way, you've always heard it said that, that uh, if you give me your checkbook and your, and your uh, calendar, that I can tell what's important in your life. Uh, many years ago, I added a third one. If you give me your checkbook, your calendar, and your refrigerator door, I can tell what's important to you in life. But really, what, what this series is about is asking the questions, you know, uh, uh, the, what are the big things in my life? Where do I spend my time? Look back at the last week. What, what, what have you done? Now, you might think, well, Pastor Jeff, this isn't a good week to think about that because all I did was sit around and watch soap operas all week. And, and I would tell you this, if that's what you did with the time off that you had, shame on you. Shame on you. What do you do with your time? You go home and look at your check, check register and ask the question, where do I spend my money? And perhaps the third question that where you can realize what your true priorities are is what do I think about most often? For me, as I was reading these questions, some things were popping into, into my mind. Maybe they were popping into your mind. Hobbies you have, uh, and the new HD TV or the Blu-ray disc player you just bought, the movie fest you had while, the, while snow was covering the ground. And you can claim whatever priorities that you think you have. But the answer to these three questions on this screen right up here reveals what your priorities really are. And what we want is for our real priorities to match our hoped-for priorities. When settling those priorities, there are a couple of things I want you to keep in mind. And the first one is the question, 
what does God want me to do? Now, uh, you, you may have a list of priorities that you've begun there, and, and, and uh, you may think of it as your dream list if you want, but if we focus on what we want, we will inevitably head in the wrong direction. The Bible says in James chapter 4, 13 through 17, it says, Look here, you people, who say today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and will stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what will happen tomorrow? For your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it is gone. In, uh, going on. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or do that. Otherwise, you will be boasting about your own plans, and all such boasting is evil. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. God also said in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, it said, In his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his step. Instead of asking, what do I want? We should ask, what does God want me to do in this, in this life of mine? Because if we, don't, if we don't do what God wants us to do, we are sinning. It's as simple as that. We can determine what we want to do, but God already knows the future. He knows what we really need, and it makes sense to let God in on our list of priorities. That's the first question, that we, that the first thing I want us to keep in mind. What does God want me to do? And the second thing I want you to have in mind as you are thinking about a priorities list in your life is, is don't limit God. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, one of my favorite verses, it says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Let's say that together. That's a good one for all of us to say together. One, two, three. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And through Jesus, God gives us the power to tackle God-sized dreams and God-sized problems. If God tells us in his word to do something, then I can tell you, I can promise you this, that God will give you the strength, God will give you the ability, and God will give you the means to do it. What needs to go on your bucket list? I'm going to... Uh, you know, and, and folks, let me tell you this. I see this in people's lives all the time where when, when others recognize, uh, you know, a gift that God has given them and, and they haven't recognized it themselves. And, and when, it, when, the job is all, when the job is finished, they can look back and say, you know, I really did have the strength to do what God wanted me to do. Never limit God. Now, let me tell you, God, I don't think that that priorities list ought to be something so broad like love people more or love my wife more or love others the way Jesus does. That may sound really good, but if you can't set a goal and be specific, if you can't set a priority, then it doesn't mean anything. You see, it's okay to say I want to love others more or I want to love my wife or I want to love my husband more or I want to love my church member more. But let me tell you what, you've, 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 you've not taken the first step that you need to ask God to do, and that is, God, will you make me a more loving person? When we become a loving person, it's a whole lot easier to love people around you. And, and that's what I want you to be looking at and specific about is, is what does God really want me to do? And please remember do not limit God. In the next several weeks, I will share with you what I believe are sound scriptural items that should be on everybody's list of priorities. Now, I want to give you just a little bit of time to write down uh, on your list of priorities. Pull out your, your little uh, post-it notes. Don't waste these things because they're important. I want to give you a couple of of minutes. I'm going to have a word of prayer, and then I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to think about priorities that, that, uh, that is what God would have you to do and does not limit God in your life. Make a copy, give me a copy, and I'll be using those in the future. Will you bow with me for a word of prayer? Father God, we do thank you. We thank you that you are a great God. 
and that you want to do great things with us and for us. And today, O oh God, I, I pray that, that you would give us the strength to look at our lives, honestly look at them, and to perhaps set some priorities in our life. Lord, if there's someone we want to love more, allow us to, to pray the prayer that says, Lord, make me more loving. Lord, if there is someone that we know we need to forgive, Lord, let us pray the prayer that says, Lord, allow me to be more forgiving. Allow me to be a forgiving spirit. Lord, these are both gifts that you seek to give your people, and there are many more. In just a few moments, Lord, we will have uh, a few quiet moments that doesn't often take place in church to write down a, a priority that, that we know comes from you and secondly, does not limit you. Give us the strength, O oh God, to set godly priorities in this coming.